All right, guys. The attendance tonight was 17,907 sold out. Highest attended UFC event in UK history. The gate was 6.72 million, arena gate record. Uh, the bonuses are uh, 100,000 for bark, uh, parking, Aspinall gets 100, and Patty gets 200. Nice. Congratulations to all of them. Uh, Dana, good morning. Good uh, morning. <laughs> Blan Mohammed's new welterweight champion. Curious your thoughts on the main event, on his performance, and Leon Edwards' performance. Um, wasn't a barn burner. Do you think maybe Leon kind of, to me, looks a little bit lethargic? Maybe the time was hurting him a bit more than Bilal? Do you think that was a factor? Or do you think Bilal's pressure was just too much for him to overcome? I have no clue. Uh, I, you know, you're going to have to ask uh, Leon how he felt and what was going on. And, you know, um, Bilal, I, you know, I know Bilal's been training with uh, Habib. So his, his uh, performance was, you know, what you would expect. You know, in the past, we've seen these dominant champions get an instant rematch. Do you think that might be the case here, or do you think it's better to just have Leon rest a little bit? And yeah, off? let him rest. But we're talking about other things right now. Okay. Uh, Tom Aspinall, one minute, got him out of there. I mean, kind of different from the main event, right? Just came in there and blew him off. Do you think that John Jones fight is getting bigger and bigger? Yeah. Yeah, there's no doubt about it. I mean, there's, there's no doubt. Whoever wins the fight between John Jones and Stipe is a great fight for Aspinall. Have you spoke to either of those two about that? Because I know both of them have said maybe this is their last one. Have you spoke to either of them to get their temperature? We it doesn't even matter. What, whatever's going to happen when they fight is going to happen, and, and we'll go from there. But as fans, we can all say, ooh, that's a fun fight, no matter who wins. Speaking of John Jones, uh, the 12-6 to 6 elbow rule has been overturned, and there's some talk about he wanted his loss to Matt Hamill overturned. Is that something you can even look into, and is that something you'd like to see? I've been trying to do that since it happened. So, yeah. I think I wanted it more than he did. So it hasn't worked out too well, though. No. But, uh, yeah, I've been, I've been fighting for that for a long time. You had an incompetent uh, referee, a guy who we can all agree now. Maybe I sounded like, you know, an asshole back in the day. But now we can all look back and 100% say that a guy that was completely incompetent at a time when the Nevada State Athletic Commission was at its weakest, you know, the guy who was running it was a zero. Mazzagatti should have never been in there, and the list goes on and on. Um, and that thing should have been and should be overturned, and I've been fighting for it for years. All right. Two more quick ones outside of tonight. You know, every time you get on a press conference, the fighters manage to get you to up the bonuses. Do you think there's an argument that maybe you should just up them I think tonight showed that we should not. No. Oh. Upping them doesn't change anything. It doesn't make anybody fight any harder. It doesn't, it doesn't change anything. I'm not doing this again. Ever. Ever. Today was the last, the last day that I'm doing that. Yeah. Not saying that in the future the bonuses couldn't get up, but I'm not going to be at a press conference and say, 200, 300, fucking never again. Never again. So you, you can thank everybody on this card for that. Damn, dude. Yeah. Uh, Nobody fought any harder. There was no sense of urgency. Holy shit, I want the 100,000. Seven straight. Who gives a fuck? It's uh, fucking 7 o'clock uh, in Vegas. So, whatever. Yeah. Never again. Okay. I lost seven straight fucking decisions. Yeah. The 100,000 was, was, was a real big fucking woohoo. Let's get it, boys. Fuck that shit. Never again. Okay. And last one for me. Um, the Sphere card was announced. I know you're not scared of competition, but the T-Mobile is running a Canelo fight that night. I mean, it's Mexican Independence Day. Is that something you expected them to do? And how, who wins that night, right? Is your Sphere show going to blow them out of the water? Do you think it's going to divide the crowd? What are you expecting from Yeah, them? I, you know, I didn't know what they were going to do, to be honest with you, but it's, uh, it's Mexican Independence Day. So you had to assume there were probably going to be some Mexicans fighting other than our Mexicans uh, that night, so... Like I said yesterday, I, I said it is what it is. Here we go. Dana, See how it plays out. Right next to him. Uh, I know you gave him the bonus, but what did you make of Patty's performance? And on the flip side, what did you make of uh, Bobby or King Green now, like shooting for that takedown, knowing that Patty is such a high-level black belt? I don't think that, you know, when you're in a fight like that and you get into a scramble and, you know, 
shit just happens in the moment. And, and, and I'm sure that's what happened to Bobby. I'm sure he wasn't thinking, oh, man, I better stay off the ground. And, and you know, Bob, Bob King has done a great job, uh, you know, uh, anywhere a fight goes. And, and, and he's looked great lately. And, you know, I'm sure he wasn't concerned or wasn't thinking at the time. And it just, it, he got caught. I mean, listen, Patty's one of those guys that, Everybody talks shit about, and everybody wants to fight him, and everybody wants to call him out, and he keeps winning, and he looked damn good tonight. That's why he got the 200000 I mean, I don't think Bobby Green has been submitted since, like, 2009. So, yeah, congrats to him. That's the guy that came out tonight and looked like he wanted an extra $100,000. And is Patty a guy that you're going to try to keep in this region? Because he's fought in Vegas, but... When he fights here and he gets that entrance and just the reception from the crowd, it just, crowd, it just feels like he's on another level of superstardom. Yeah, I, listen, everything here is that level as long as you don't go to fucking seven straight decisions. I mean, you do anything here. And if we fucking open the show and they're singing songs and shit, it's just England's different, man. England is different. And, and when you come out and you put on an event and you perform, you feel it here. And what did you uh, make of the Makayev and Manel Cop drama? Like, you know, they had that running at the PI. They had that running at the hotel. There was so much bad shit that happened in the, uh, behind the scenes with that thing. Um, and, yeah. Yeah, not good. Uh, Makayev said that his contract is up. And he made this interesting remark that so said someone at the UFC told him to stop shooting for these takedowns so much. And maybe he'll get this contract that he wants. Uh, is that true? And what, is, what do, you, do you think he'll bring him back? Yeah, that's what we tell guys. We tell guys how to fight and tell them what we did. We've been doing this for, for a long fucking time. Uh, I'm sure one of the matchmakers probably said something to him or whatever, but, um, yeah, the matchmakers aren't big fans of his for many different reasons and not just take. There's a lot of people who shoot takedowns in this, in this business, uh, you know, a lot of guys that fight with that type of style, but it's, it's a lot more than just that. But Makayev is the guy that you'd want to bring back to the UFC because he said his contract is totally done now. Yeah, he is. He's, he's under contract. He's not, he's not under contract anymore. Okay. Uh, but you, would you be interested in, you know, keeping him around in the fall? I think the PFL is going to get a great undefeated guy. Really? Good luck to him. Yeah. Uh, what about Manel? Uh, because we saw at the, even before the fight even started, he was trying to run it. Mohamed Mahayev, uh, the, the security had to get in there before the first bell even rang. To pull the yeah, because just so much – Dumb shit is happening. I mean, we couldn't even have a face-off. But it's the typical, it was one of those typical kind of fights. We've all seen this before over the years. Oh, I can't wait to get to you. I can't wait to get to you. Oh, I'm going to fucking kill you. And then five minutes and they don't do anything for the first five minutes of the fight. I mean, it's just, we, we kind of figured that's how that fight would go. It's, you know, historically, that's how they go. Last one on this one, you said the PFL is going to get an undefeated uh, fighter. Is that his fighting style? Is that he's asking for too much money? What is, why? None of the, none of the above. It's, it's a, listen, for whatever reason, listen, the stuff that played out here over the last several months that started at the PI and other stories of, the, you know, this breaking out, plus many other things. These guys, uh, these guys don't want to resign them. And then last one for me, um, unrelated to this fight, Ilya Taporia tweeted that uh, something along the lines of, like, looks like the UFC is forcing him to fight, take the fight. I, obviously, we're assuming it's Max Holloway. Is there any update on that fight and when it could be? That we're doing what? Ilya tweeted uh, something along the lines of, it looks like the UFC is finally forcing him to take the fight, and we all assume he's referring to Max Holloway. Is there any update on that fight? I don't think you ever have to force Max Holloway to fight. But Volkanovski said. Yeah, that's funny. One from me, uh, regarding Paddy Pimler, obviously, we've touched him a little bit. There were so many detractors saying he'd never even make the top 15. Why do you think he's so underestimated? What's that? Why, oh, why is he so uh, underestimated? Is that what you're asking me? I don't know, man. He's just one of those guys that I think that um, his personality or whatever it is, people aren't afraid of him. I, I don't know. I can't explain it. I can't, but, you know, he, 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 he showed tonight. You don't have to be afraid of him, but you definitely better worry about him. And now he's in the top 15, so. Uh, and, and he's never lost in the UFC, so, you know, he's the real deal. And without some I, I know this, too. He probably fucked up a lot of parlays tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we've had some massive stars in the UK, the likes of Michael Bisping. But what Tom Aspinall did tonight was just amazing. Do you think he's got potential to become the biggest UK MMA star we've ever had? 
he's different, man. For a heavyweight, the speed, explosiveness, the way that guy moves, um, yeah, he, and, and power, 100% finish rate. Yeah, he's a bad boy. Perfect. Last one from me. Obviously, you said that Bilal and Leon didn't produce a barn burner. Is there any chance that Leon gets another shot against Bilal or just take Bilal in a different direction now? Um, no. Uh, Leon's done great things. We love Leon. He's, 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 he's a great kid. Let him rest, relax. You know, um, he looked flat tonight. Again, he hasn't been out here yet, right? Yeah. I mean, you guys are going to have to ask him what happened, and then I'll read about it while I'm flying home. And... Uh, and, and we'll go from there. But right now, we're not thinking immediate rematch. Dana, just mentioning Tom Aspinall there. I know you mentioned that he has the potential to be the UK's best ever fighter. But Michael Bisping mentioned yesterday during a Q&A panel, he said he can see Tom going on to dominate the heavyweight division for years to come and go down as the greatest MMA fighter of all time. Do you see him capable of achieving that? The, so, yes, I mean, th this guy, to, to, to put that on him right now, he obviously has the, the, the ability to, to, to dominate the heavyweight division. What he did to Curtis Blades tonight, I mean, let's, let's be honest here. Curtis Blades is not a guy you walk right through. He walked through him tonight like it was nothing. So there's no doubt about that the guy's got the talent. Um, but when you start talking... He, he won this fight tonight. He could be the greatest of all time. Again, you know how I feel about John Jones. It's just you, you, you got some big shoes to fill, and you got a, a, a lot of people to wreck, you know, before you even start talking about even being in, within John Jones' universe, in my opinion. As someone who's been around the fight game as long as you, just curiously, have you ever seen a heavyweight move like Tom Aspinall? No. He, he, he is special. He is absolutely positively special, and, and uh, yeah, we obviously expect big things from him. And just touching on Paddy Pimblett as well, his star power, we've known that since the first fight at the Apex a couple of years ago. It's just continued to rise, and back-to-back -back wins over Tony Ferguson and Bobby Green, huge names on the record. Could you see him main event in a fight night over here potentially next year? Patty, yeah, you can do anything with Patty. I mean, the, the, the guy's a superstar. There's no doubt about it. And, and uh, everybody who keeps doubting him, he keeps proving everybody wrong. And tonight, tonight, you know, again, we're talking about how he's never lost a fight. But again, another, tonight was a big test for him, and he breaks into the top 15 um, and, and did it impressively against a highly motivated, very talented guy. A final one for me, just away from this card, Alex Pereira has been looming over the heavyweight division. He wants to move to the heavyweight division. and he's He hasn't been looming over the heavyweight division. A People have been saying he should go to the heavyweight division. He did call out the heavyweight champs he wanted to fight after UFC 300, I believe. And he's, he's stepped up for you guys so much this year. Is that something that you'd love to see at some point? Maybe not necessarily the next fight for him. What, weren't we just talking about Tom Aspinall? We were talking about Tom Aspinall, yeah. Greatest ever? So maybe Pereira versus ever. Aspinall at some point. Powerful, uh, agility, speed. So you think he should move up and you think he should fight Tom Aspinall? I mean, the fans want to see it, David. Yeah. Do you want to see it? Well, I'm asking you. You think it's a good idea? We were just talking about how he's... Yeah, I think, it's, I think it's a good idea. I think if Pereira wants to do it, Tom wants it. So I should John, move John Pereira up, it. a guy who's... Fucking superstar in that weight class and looks great. And I think the fans are greedy and they like the idea of dream fights. I'm sure it's a dream fight that you've seen on the internet yourself. I mean, you got any more questions for me? I'm saying Jones moving up to heavyweight was the dream for a long time. We've got that. So I feel like that similar storyline is going to happen with Alex Pereira. Well, you got Jones fighting Stipe. Whoever wins that, they fight Tom Aspinall. Where does he fit into this There's right lot, now? There is a lot going on. There, there is a lot going on for you. I agree with that. Anybody else? Yeah, <laughs> Dana, Dana down, oh, um, down here to your left. Yeah, go <laughs> ahead. From the... oh, I'll go. Go ahead. I got you next. Uh, you, you talked about um, Aspinall obviously potentially fighting John. That's uh, John and Stipe are, is November. John keeps saying November 9th. Is there any possibility that Aspinall could be the backup for that fight? 100%. We'd be insane not to make him the backup for that fight. 
And do you think that performance, um, well, John is at the stage of his career where he only wants to take fights that really get his competitive juices flowing. Do you think that type of performance there from Tom Aspinall would potentially get him to shell potential? Listen, John Jones is no dummy. John Jones, you know, has a very high fight IQ. He, he knows what Aspinall's got and what he's about. Um, I think that we're going to have to see what happens with this fight with Stipe, see where John's head is, or if Stipe wins, see where his head is, and let's see what they want to do. Is it their last fight? Are they going to retire? Um, I think that if Stipe wins, he, he probably will. But I think if John Jones wins, I think that uh, I, I just think that that competitive spirit that he has and, and his uh, desire to prove to the world that he's the best, especially when people are saying he could be, you know, possibly the best ever. I think that's the kind of shit that fires John Jones up. Um, w would you be a bit pissed if either him or Stipe did call it a day afterwards? Would what, what, what I? Would you be a bit, like, pissed or a bit sad that they call it a day after that fight? I'm sorry. I don't understand one would word. You uh, after, retire. Retire if he retires? Yeah. If both retire? <laughs> oh, fucking that'll suck. <laughs> that'll suck. I don't know what we'll do if that happens. I guess then, my guy, there we go. There we go. He slides right in and... The world is happy. Thank you. Uh, you said yourself several occasions, UK fans like do it differently. Is there any chance that we get to see you here more than once a year? Because I know that I'd enjoy it and everyone else would. Yeah, listen, guys, you know, I, I say this all the time. When we first got into this, when I say we, Lorenzo and I, the United States, the UK, and Mexico were very important to us. And now we have a heavyweight champion from the UK. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's a big deal. So um, it was important to me to come back to Manchester to do this fight. I wanted, I wanted this. We were talking about all these other places um, to put this fight on, and I was like, oh, hell no. This, this fight needs to be done in England. And New Arena was here, and timing was perfect, and here we are. So my answer, that my long-winded answer is yes. Any you chance know? we can have a, a normal time, please? Probably not, <laughs> <laughs> unfortunately. Uh, Dana, yeah. right here. Um, with, when you have success like this in the U.K., in France, does that encourage you to look at more European cities or countries, Germany, Spain, stuff like that? Well, we always do. I mean, um, you know, we, we've done fights in Germany. Um, we have it in Spain, but we're working on it. I, I would have done one in Spain already, but the venues are all backed up, so we couldn't get a venue. Um, but the answer is yes. I mean, listen, we're, we're, now that we've come out of COVID, we're, we're traveling the, uh, the fight nights more now and, you know, we're getting the pay-per-views around. We were hitting the, the same spots for a while there because of all the madness that was going on in the world at the time. But, uh, yeah, no, we're back. We're back on hitting as many places as we can in a year. And uh, I don't know if you saw, but it went a little viral on the Internet. Um, something happened on the broadcast where uh, Ben Roethlisberger, a graphic of Ben Roethlisberger got popped up in the middle of the event and uh, just How went, nutty is saw that? that and, and I guess ESPN that. was having all kinds of problems tonight technically with audio and <laughs> graphics and you know, NFL graphics were popping up and I heard about it, but I don't know why, but it was, it was an ESPN issue. And uh, what, were you surprised with a, an event that happens at this time of night that the English crowd was so loud and so passionate singing their songs and everything? No, this is England, man. This, this is what it's like. That's why I wanted to come here with this fight. Um, and that's why I was telling this guy over here, we're going to come here more. Yeah, I know, this place is special. It's different. I tell everybody in the States, if you've never been to England for a fight, you got to go. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, hey, how are you? Go ahead. All right, sorry, just one from me. Uh, Nick Diaz was supposed to fight next week, and it said it was, he was out because of travel issues. What happened exactly with him? I have no idea. Uh, is the plan to have the fight with Luke rebooked? Because I spoke to Luke, and he said that's what he hopes. Me too. Does that mean, are you... How confident are you that Nick Diaz fights this year? Not very. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Diana, I'm curious on your opinion on Leon Edwards versus just here at the back. Yep, go ahead. Leon okay. Edwards versus Ian Gary. Obviously, Ian was kicked out of Leon's gym. There's a bit of a storyline there. And, and now Leon isn't the champion. I'm wondering if you're interested in that fight. I wasn't until you just mentioned it. Sounds good. Cheers. Thank you, sir. One from me, Dana. Um, yeah. Over here. Yeah. Just Go ahead. On your other side. 
Okay. <laughs> um, we've loved to see you um, bring the UFC to Manchester. When do you think you could next bring it back to Manchester? Maybe 404? Bring it back to Manchester? Yeah. I haven't left yet. <laughs> and is there any team that you'll be supporting, City or United, in the next EPL season? Sure. Which one? <laughs> Manchester. Okay. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know anything about that stuff, but I hope Manchester wins. I have, no, I have no skin in any game, so I'm going with Manchester. Dana, down here again, um, to your left. Yeah. You touched on the different markets where you want to crack. Um, it, gentleman brought up Spain there. One that you talked about last December was Africa, and you said that you'd held talks with um, Rwanda and another couple of countries about hosting it. Has there been any movement, any progress on that? I'm sure there has, but off the top of my head, I don't know. I, I haven't talked to my guys about that yet, but obviously this fight that's going to happen in, in Australia here coming up will determine, you know, our next trip to Africa. And I know everybody doesn't want to count South Africa as Africa, but I do. So... More than likely, our first fight in Africa will be South Africa. And like I said, we are working on um, other venues. Um, but I don't know what, 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 what progress has been made or what's going on with it right now. Thank you. Cool. Yep. Yeah, just over here. Um, you just mentioned that you're interested in a fight between Ian Gary and Leon Edwards. Could that be a fight that could headline a card in Dublin? Well, he said that. And I said... I didn't think about it until he said it. But then he said you're interested. I said it's a good idea. Um, I don't have a venue or a plan or anything yet, but, you know, I don't know if that's a fight that we would make, but I don't hate it, um, so I don't know. Is Dublin in the thought process at all, or is it dependent on Irish results, which haven't been Listen, the greatest lately? Listen, Dublin's always on, on, on my mind. You know, th that's why we were going to do that press conference there. I, I, you know, I really wanted to do that, and see, the answer is yes. We, we will definitely get back to Dublin. It's just a matter of when. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Daniel, to your left. Yeah. Um, right before the main event, uh, Bilal Muhammad's corner put the Palestine flag behind him on the fence. And what it looked like from press row was they were told to put it down. So I was just wondering, because there were other flags shown throughout the night, if, that's, if that was kind of random or if that's a policy thing because of the war. Bilal Mohammed's corner had the Palestine flag behind him and someone told them to put it down. So was that random or is it like a pol policy thing because of He put a what? Palestine flag. Oh, Palestine flag and somebody said take it down? Who said take it down? I don't know who it was, but it looked like it was someone from the UFC. There was like two people just like telling them to don't put it, <laughs> to don't put it on the fence. Looked like there were people from UFC? Were they wearing fucking UFC hats or uh, no, I mean, name they, tags? Otherwise, or? I wouldn't have been right at the octagon. <laughs> I, I guess, have no so. idea. But there's, no no, idea. there's no like new flag policy thing because of anything. Or. I have no idea. I get what you're trying to do, but I have no idea. I was just wondering because... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what afraid. you're trying to do. I know what you're trying to do. Yeah. Good try. I don't fucking... I have no idea. But good try. You guys love to do that shit. <laughs> Have a good night.